While InDesign has many tools to perform a wide array of tasks, what I'm going to do is show you the primary tools that you'll first interact with. On the left hand side, you'll find the Tools panel, and by default, the Tools panel is displayed in a single column view. This is great if you're concerned about screen real estate, but if you wish to expand it to a two column view, all you have to do is click the double arrow in the top left hand corner. And it acts as a toggle, so if you click it again, the panel will be restored to its default single column view. What's great about the tools inside of this panel is that they each have a keyboard shortcut. And if you hover over a particular tool, a tooltip will appear giving you the name of the tool and its corresponding keyboard shortcut. So, for example, if I press the T key on the keyboard, I'll activate the type tool. If I press the V key on the keyboard, I'll activate the selection tool. With the selection tool active, if I come over and click on this image, I'm going to select the frame that contains that image. And you'll notice with the frame selected, I have a series of resize handles giving me the ability to increase the size of the frame or decrease the size of the frame. If you decrease the size of the frame, you'll notice in this case, I'll be cropping off a portion of that image. You also have the ability to rotate the frame by placing your cursor outside of one of the corners of the frame. You click and drag, you'll rotate it. All text, illustrations, and images exist inside of a frame within InDesign. The first thing that I'm going to do is show you how you can create a text frame. I'm going to press the T key on the keyboard to activate the type tool. You'll notice that the cursor changes to an I beam. All I have to do is click and drag to define the text frame. After doing that, I can come up to the type menu and from the type menu, I can choose fill with placeholder text. Now what I want to do is place an image within the document. It's really important not to have a frame selected. So I'm going to press the escape key on the keyboard to activate the selection tool. Then I'm going to click away from this frame to deselect it. Now we can come up to the file menu and from the file menu, you can choose place, command D or control D is the keyboard shortcut, select an image and click open. When you do that, you'll notice that your cursor changes. It indicates that you have a graphic loaded. If you click once, the image will be brought in at 100%. If you prefer to define the size of the frame, you can do that as well. I'll go ahead and undo this, Command Z or Control Z. Then I'll simply click and drag again, and this will define the size of the frame. Of course, you can always resize the frame. You can use any one of these resize handles. You can make it larger or smaller by dragging these handles. If you place your cursor outside of one of the corners, you can rotate the frame. I'll go ahead and undo that. And if you hold down the shift key, you'll constrain the proportions of the frame. If you increase the size of the frame, you have some options in terms of what the image will look like inside of it. Up here in the control panel, you'll notice that there's a collection of buttons. This first button will allow you to fill the frame while maintaining the proportions of the artwork. You also have the ability to numerically change the width and the height of the frame. For example, if I know that I want this frame to be five inches, I can come over to the width text field in the control panel and type that value in. I'll type in five I N. And in this case, I'll have this chain link icon selected, which will constrain the proportions of the frame. Once I tab away from it, you'll notice that it's resized. Frames in InDesign are an essential part of page layout. Aside from holding graphics and text, Frames can act as graphic elements. In this video, you'll create a frame using the frame tools, round the corners, and also apply a color fill. You can open this practice file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial if you want to follow along. Now to see the different types of shapes you can create, in the tools panel on the left, press and hold down on the rectangle tool. These tools are great for creating unassigned frames, or frames that are also graphic design elements, like a color box behind text that improves readability. If you create a frame and later change your mind about how you want to use it, in other words, add text or graphic, you can always add text or a graphic to it. Select the rectangle tool and come out into the page. You'll create a frame with a color that will go behind this text. So starting here, press and drag to create a frame. As with any frame, if you press the shift key while drawing, you'll constrain the proportions so the width and height are the same.
After creating frames in InDesign, you'll most likely need to transform them in different ways to fit them into your designs. Now, in order to finish this flyer, you'll explore rotating and flipping frames, as well as locking and hiding content within them. You can open this file from the practice files for this tutorial if you want to follow along. Transformations you apply to content can be found in the Properties panel to the right of the document and also in the Transform panel found under Window, Object and Layout, Transform. You'll focus on working with the Properties panel. With the Selection tool selected, click to select this image in the background. Make sure not to click in the Content Grabber in the center because then you'll select the image and not the frame. In the Properties panel, you'll see a few options for transforming the content. To see more options for transforming, click More Options in this Transform section here. Each of the points you see here in this box represents a point on the selected frame. For instance, the upper left point here is the upper left point on the frame over here. Now you need to flip the image around the center since it's already in position. So click the center point here if it's not already selected. Going forward, any transformations you make, which could be flipping, rotating, or other, will be around the center of the selected content. Then, click the Flip Horizontal option here to flip the image horizontally across the center. In InDesign, you may need to align objects to each other, maybe to create a row of aligned images, or you may want to keep objects together by creating a group of all the content in your page header, for example. In order to complete this flyer, you'll learn how to align content with Smart Guides, group content and work with groups, and align content with the Align options. To follow along, you can open this practice file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. To make sure that you can see the entire page, choose View, Fit Page and Window. Then, to zoom in over here, select the Zoom tool in the Tools panel and drag from left to right to zoom in here. As you move content, Smart Guides can help align content and appear as temporary Snap To Guides. Smart Guides are turned on by default, and with nothing selected, they can be found in the Properties panel on the right here. With them on, to see how they work, select the Selection tool in the Tools panel. Then press and drag this text frame to the right. As you drag, you should see a series of green horizontal lines telling you it's in line with its original position. When it's aligned with the left edge of the object above, release the mouse button. With the text aligned to this line, it'd be helpful to keep this content together so they can be moved as one object, which is where grouping comes in. When adding content to your InDesign projects, you can create non-printing guides to help you align content easily. In order to align this content a set distance from the edge of the page, you'll create what's called a ruler guide. So you can follow along, you can open this practice file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. Now in order to create a guide, you need to show the page rulers. So with nothing selected, in the properties panel, click the rulers option here. Rulers appear at the top of the document window and along the left edge. They reflect the units you initially set, in this case it was inches. To change the units, you can actually right click either ruler and choose a new unit. You would need to do that for both rulers to change them both. Now rulers are a great way to visually see the position of content relative to the upper left corner of the page. You can see the zero on both rulers, horizontal and vertical, starts here. To create a horizontal guide, you drag from the horizontal ruler up here. To create a vertical guide, you drag from the vertical ruler on the left. In this tutorial series, you'll be designing your own print-ready, trifold brochure, just like this one. Let's start by opening InDesign and creating a new blank document by choosing File, New Document. In this dialog box, let's start by clicking on the Print tab and choosing the letter preset. Let's switch our units to inches and switch the orientation from Portrait to Landscape. Choose two pages to get our front and back, then turn off facing pages. Our document has a front and a back, but not pages that'll face one another like a book.
let's start designing by bringing some images into our document. To keep things precise, let's head up to View and choose Show Rulers. We'll want our images to be lined up, so let's mouse over the horizontal ruler and click and drag a horizontal guide down to three and a quarter inches. Keep an eye on the control bar to see the exact Y position of the guide as you drag. You can also hold the shift key to snap to the nearest eighth of an inch. To be sure that our design elements will snap to our guides, let's head up to View, Grids and Guides, and double check that Snap to Guides is checked. Now it's time to add some text. Text can be typed into text frames created using the type tool found on the toolbar or brought in from a text file using file, place, or even just copied and pasted from a text document. With the type tool selected, let's click and drag a text frame next to our canvas. This title will say living well is the best revenge. When you're done entering text, press the escape key to commit, then click and drag the middle of the box to position it in the corner of the top right frame. Now we're ready to begin styling our text. Let's start by taking a look at fonts. As part of your Creative Cloud membership, you have access to thousands of high quality fonts in the Typekit library. To browse and sync Typekit fonts, Choose Type from the menu bar, then Add Fonts from Typekit. Let's add a few more details to refine our design before we call it a day. Let's place the Carson logo on page 1 by choosing File, Place, and selecting CarsonLogo.ai. We'll click and drag to place it like so. Now, we're finally ready to print and share our document. Let's start by creating a PDF for print. Head up to File, 